Um, yeah, so I'm gonna talk about what's uh, new in Elixir, what have we, we've been working on. Uh, my name is Andrea, I am a member of the Elixir team. I work at a company called Weed Maps, uh, which is uh, weed like weed, so it's a like Yelp for weed. You can review like dispensaries, you can review strains of weed, um, and they, I'm very grateful because they sent me here. I have a nice shirt, it says Git Commit, Git Push, Git High, it's very funny. Uh, we're hiring, uh, mostly for technical roles, so not for like testing or anything. Uh, so you can go to weedmaps.com slash careers and see what we are hiring for. Um, so Elixir 1.0 was released in September 2014. Um, it was around 180 contributors. Um, right now we're Elixir 1.6. Uh, we have over 730 contributors. Uh, it was this was released around like six months ago. Um, so Elixir is 1.0 is almost four years old. Um, so WebMD says that a like functioning four-year-old should follow two to three-part commands, put your book away, brush your teeth, and get then get in bed. Elixir can do this. Can recognize familiar word signs such as stop. It can better understand the concept of time. It understands the concept of time, I think, fairly well. It can count to ten. It can correctly name many things, including at least four colors and three shapes. So Elixir is on track to being like a like a yeah good language. Um, so Elixir one point so we release every th six months usually. So one point five was released mid twenty seventeen. One point six was released at the beginning of this year. One point seven we're not sure. Uh, we're gonna make it for mid twenty eighteen, but uh, we're we're almost there. Um, so I want to talk about a bunch of improvements to Elixir one point six uh, that are available right now. So last year I was here doing the same talk, and I mentioned this project called X Format, which was a code for matter um, for Elixir code. So now we have this project, uh, we worked on it, it's done, and it's in Elixir. Um, so the idea is that you can take a piece of code and you can format it to a standard formatting style. Um, so for example, if you go from the piece of code on the left to the piece of code on the right when formatting, the idea is to have a common styling formatting throughout teams, throughout companies, throughout projects, and throughout the whole Elixir community. The, Formatter is feature complete, so it can format code that's like 99% of what it should do. Um, it's configurable. Uh, we try to do no configuration, but some things are configurable, like calls without parentheses, and it supports formatting entire mix mixed projects. So if you have a .formatter.dxs file, which is generated when you do mix new right now, you can just do mix format and it formats all the code in your project. It's really nice. Um, when I was here last year, I mentioned also Dynamic Supervisor, something that we were working on. This has been merged in Elixir as well. So the idea behind Dynamic Supervisor is that s there's a lot of supervision strategies, as you know, not a lot, but there's a few. So there's like one for one, and, and um, simple one for one is another one, and simple one for one is a bit of a special strategy. So the problem with that it causes is that the supervisor module has a slightly confusing a mixed API because every documentation and the documentation is, is a bit hard to read because it sa always says this is how the supervisor behaves except when it's simple one for one then this is how the supervisor behaves for most functions I would say. So the idea is that we built another supervisor called dynamic supervisor that does what a simple one for one supervisor does but on its own without being connected to supervisor, so uh, it has its own documentation, it has its own API, and it, it does just the same thing. So you can start children with child specs, but it's a bit more friendly to, to work with. Uh, so one member of the Elixir core team uh, had a very nasty comment about this, that it's just like simple one for one, but actually simple. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm all, so I, I, I didn't say this, I'm just reporting this. Um, we did a lot of efforts on documentation as well for the 1.6 release. So the first thing that I want to mention is really nice is the addition of deprecated and scenes module attributes. So the, the idea behind scenes is that you can say when a function was introduced, what, which version a function was introduced at. So the idea is that tooling and documentation can use this in order to say, okay, when can I, I, I'm, I'm on Elixir 1.4, can I use this function? And if it's scenes previously in 1.4, then you can. Um, and the idea behind deprecated is to actually deprecate function in favor of something else. So the deprecated attribute takes a string, and you can say what to do instead of using this function. And then, um, um, I, the nice thing is that when you compile your Elixir code, it will look for the deprecated annotations that we will warn. So when you so mixxref, which is a task and also a compiler for Elixir, will uh, warn. So when you compile your Elixir code, it will warn for deprecated functions even in libraries uh, as well as in the standard library. Uh, we added a bunch of pages to the documentation. The first one is library guidelines. This is for, uh, this is just contains a bunch of um, nice pra best practices and uh, good things to do when building libraries in Elixir. 
Uh, we added the compatibility table with Erlang and OTP, so then now you can say, okay, I'm on ver like which version of Elixir works with which versions of Erlang. So it's really nice. Um, we have a table deprecation, so you can go look up which functions we deprecate and in favor of what, in, which, in what version, what you can use instead. And this is just so a bunch of efforts to make like everything more documented, I guess. Um, we did a bunch of UX uh, user experience improvements as well. The first one that I really, really like is mix test dash dash slowest n. So you can, when you're testing, you can say print out the first n, the, the top n slowest tests. Um, and the idea is that you can get like an idea of uh, where your test suit is uh, slow if it's all concentrated in some places. For example, in this, um, in this um, test suite that I ran, you can see that like 65, 61% of the total time was spent for just three tests. Um, so I mean that's, that's really useful information to um, refactor and make it, make it faster and see where bottlenecks are. Um, another user experience improvement is that with OTP 21 we got 10 to 20% completion speed up for free, I guess. Uh, we didn't do a lot, but it's there and we're gonna take credit for it, of course. Um, Another nice thing that we have in 1.6 is DevGuard. So the idea behind DevGuard is that you can define customized guards, which are just, you're just redefining a, a guard. As a, like you're just, this is just a macro that defines a guard. And the idea is just you can just be more expressive with it. So in this example, you have DevGuard is drinking gauge, which just compiles to age greater than or equals 21. And then you can use it as a guard and just makes code nicer to read. And at compile time, it does some optimization, whether it's used in guards or in uh, normal code. The plans for the future, so one thing, one more thing I mentioned last year when I was here is uh, we wanted to work on a data streams plus property based testing library. So we, we did work on it. Um, this library is called Stream Data. You can find it on the internet if you Google Stream Data Elixir. Um, and this is a data generation and property based testing library. So the data generation size Basically, it's just you, we provide a bunch of streams that that um, emit infinite randomly generated um, terms, and you can and we will provide ways to compose the generators to create very complex random um, terms. So in this case, we're just saying stream data integer it just generates integers, and we take two two terms out of this generator and it returns two random integers. Um, and we use this and we build so this can be used on on its own to generate random data. But we use this, uh, we leverage this in the property-based testing side. So we use um, the stream data generators as generators for random data to do property-based testing with. Um, so in this, ex and we provide the property-based testing functionality as well. So in this example, we are checking that the concatenation of two binaries always starts with the first binary. Uh, this is actual code that, that runs, I mean. Um, and uh, we assert that uh, we just generate two random binaries and we assert that the concatenation starts with the first one. And this has all the property-based testing features you expect, like shrinking um, is uh, pretty flexible and I think it's been bottle tested, um, start, it's starting to be bottle tested enough for actual use. Um, we only have stateless testing in uh, this library, so we don't have uh, stateful testing, like uh, testing of stateful systems. Uh, but we started discussion on the API and this is something that we plan on having in the library at some point. Uh, hopefully next year I'm gonna be here and have a screenshot of the screenshot thing. Yeah, we 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 added it. Um, another feature we added in in that we want to add in 1.7 is underscore underscore stack trace. So this is a way to retrieve the stack trace. Uh, but it, at compile time, it checks that it's inside the rescue or catch block. So this is this means that you can get the stack trace in a wrong place where you shouldn't get it. Um, another thing we're working on is configuration and releases. So we know we have some problems with um, configuration and we know that working with releases is not the smoothest in Elixir. So the idea is that we want to make this all work very well with Elixir. So we want to solve the problems that we found with mixconfig uh, and we want to streamline releases and integrate them into mix so that you can do things probably like mix release. You can, I mean, the integration between, between Elixir and releases would be much, much tighter. Another thing that we have worked on is the, uh, together with a lot of other people, is the new docs chunk that would be um, hopefully be in Erlang. Uh, this is uh, Erlang and Instrument Proposal number 48. is basically a way to store documentation um, for across all Beam languages in a standard format. Um, so it's a standard API for all the languages on the Beam. And for example, you can do stuff like uh, access documentation in the shell. So the Elixir already has this for Elixir modules, but the idea is that you we want to have this throughout the whole Beam uh, ecosystem uh, and in like between different languages. 
And to conclude, we are working on a bunch of research projects as well. So the main like uh, meta project is Google Summer of Code, where we got, uh, I think, four slots for students working with us. So if you know, don't know what Google Summer of Code is, it's a program that Google, where Google pays students to work on open source projects during the summer. So we got four slots. The first one project that we're doing is um, making stream data work with type specs. So the idea is to do two things. The first one is to take a type, a dialyzer type, for example, timeout, uh, which is either a non-negative integer or uh, infinity atom infinity, and we want to generate, we want to create a generator from it that can generate terms that belong to that type. So in this case, we can have a from type function that takes the timeout type, and then we can use it as generator and generate terms out of it. Um, and there's good progress on this. This is fairly straightforward, I would say. Um, the complex part that we want to do is to do automatic spec validation for um, functions. So in with dialyzer, you can have uh, functions with specs where you say the input type of the arguments, uh, the type of the arguments, sorry, and the type of the return value. What we want to do is do automatic checking of this by generating random terms. Uh, we know how to generate from type, so generating random terms for the arguments, calling the function that you want to automatically check with those random arguments and check that the result value is what the return type says it should be. Um, so this is kind of a smoke testing. It doesn't tell if the result um, value is correct, but it tells if the result value, if the spec is correct, if, the, if with the types of the arguments in the input, you get the type um, that, the out, that the return value says it should be. Uh, another project we're working on in Google Summer of Code is Elixir Bench. This, is what, this would be a platform to kind of do continuous integration on performance, so to do like performance, check for performance regressions, and we will start with just doing this for big projects, maybe nightly, for like Elixir and Ecto and these kind of big projects, and then evolve from there. Uh, another Google Summer of Code project that we have is integration with um, Elixir and Dialyzer. So we want to have the mixed Dialyzer task in Elixir because we want uh, to do good um, warning reports with Elixir terms and maybe more helpful errors. Uh, and we want to do we want to do manage PL, um, PLTs with mix and want to just stream streamline this experience. Uh, and the last project is TensorFlex, which is TensorFlow binding, bindings for Elixir for doing machine learning stuff. This is the, the last project that we have. Um, all this all this stuff about Elixir is at github.com slash Elixir Lang slash Elixir. This is the main repository. Uh, from there, you can visit the website, which is elixirlang.org, and you can find all the information on the projects that we have and uh, everything you need, I think. And that's it. Thank you. Yeah.